Miller's costume jewellery came about because it was the look I wanted. I was collecting costume jewellery, but there was nowhere to find out the real information about it. The designers, the factories, what was made, when it was made. It was phenomenally popular in the 1920s and 30s. A lot of the good designers that worked for the, the upscale precious jewellery makers, like Cartier and Van Cleen and Arpels, in the Great Depression, they moved to costume jewellery. And so you got the same designs that had been in rubies and diamonds, now made in, in glass. People have appreciated the quality of some costume jewellery. Of course, value has gone up too. They've become very desirable. In the book, we've covered most of the main costume jewellery designers. People like Joseph of Hollywood, which is the designer of this pin, um, designed for all the film sets. And so people who saw the films wanted to buy the same as their favourite movie star. Then, of course, people like Trafari. And when Mamie Eisenhower wore Trafari to an inaugural ball in the 50s, everyone thought, well, I can wear costume jewellery. And what I think the book does, it gives you the information in quite digestible form about all the different designers. In the book, we also cover unsigned pieces. We also look at people who are making costume jewellery today. We also have features like Good, Better, Best, which show you how to tell a better piece and then the very best piece of a particular designer. 256 pages, it's beautiful, informative and compulsive. The trouble is you then start buying costume jewellery and that can be expensive. <laughs> I must have three to four hundred pieces. <laughs>